So welcome to section three, creating a Redshift data warehouse from disparate data sets, sourcing appropriate data sets. So as we know, Redshift makes it really easy to load data in from flat files. And what we need is a set of flat files that we can ingest into a data warehouse or into Redshift that we can join together, that we can query, and that we can use to power our examples. So for this example, we want to load a data set that's got a fairly large number of records, so that ideally at least a million, so that we can give the cluster that we're going to build a little bit of a workout, although obviously we don't want to rack up uh, too large or too much of a hosting bill. Remember, we are constrained by the free tier, so that's two months running a single node cluster. That's the, the DC1 uh, large cluster. So if you, if you launch anything bigger than that, your free tier will expire proportionally. So if you have a two node cluster, you only get a month for free. If you have a four node cluster, you only get two weeks for free and, and so on. We want to be able to load the data into really more than one table so we can demonstrate joining it. Uh, and we'll see later that we actually want to be able to join against data that's in S3 using Redshift Spectrum. That's an important part of the, the learning process. The data needs to be easily downloadable in a recognizable flat file format. Obviously we want clean data. We don't want to spend time processing and cleaning up the data and tidying it up. So we want something very simple. And ideally, we should easily be able to understand the semantics of the data set. So what does the data set mean? What's it explaining without any domain specific knowledge? So the IMDB data files are great candidate. So the Internet Movie Database, if you don't know it, is like Wikipedia for movies and TV shows. It's owned by Amazon, but it's open source and all of its data is available to download for free. So the Internet Movie Database offers its data on an open source basis. It's easily downloadable and it's compressed in a flat file format. And as part of this free data set has included data on movies, TV shows, episodes, actors, ratings, and crew, including directors, lighting engineers, and all of that sort of thing. The data is in a tab delimited format. So it's just like a CSV file, but instead of the comma being the separator or the delimiter, tab is used, which is fine. IMDB has around 5 million movies and then millions of other data elements for us to query. So if you imagine if there's 5 million movies, the number of actors and cast and crew and directors and all of that sort of thing is almost an order of magnitude bigger than that again. Uh, and everything is available uh, to download at datasets.imdbws.com. So do go over there and look at the data. So let's go through the, the data sets that are available to us at a high level. So firstly, there's the title data set. So this contains, unsurprisingly, information about titles. So that is movies, TV shows, and the like. Title ID is the unique identifier for the title. So this is very important because we're going to use this later to join against other fact tables that we download. Some of the other useful information like title, as in the title of the, the product, the region, the language, the title type, and other metadata uh, are included in this file. So if you want to get it, download title.acas.tsv.gz and unzip it into a local directory on your computer uh, because we're going to need it in the next video. We're going to create another Redshift cluster and we're going to demonstrate how we can import the data into that cluster. There's also the title basics data set. So this contains additional information about titles that's not in the title data set. And tconst is the unique identifier for the title, which we can then use to join back against the title data set. So you'll see in a little bit when we start querying this data set, that that's one of the key columns that we join against. There's some other useful information in this data set as well, like title type. Is it a movie, a TV series, or documentary, or something else? A start and end year, the genre, and if title is an adult production or not. Of course, so for some use cases, for lots of use cases, we, we would probably want to filter those out. So to get hold of that, download title.basics.tsv.gz, again, to a local directory on your computer, but this time don't unzip it. We're going to demonstrate how you can import a compressed file into Redshift, which obviously is useful for saving bandwidth on your computer, for saving storage space. And it means if you've already got a compressed data set like this, you don't have to worry about decompressing it first. So next up, we're going to use a modified version of our CloudFormation manifest to create a new Redshift cluster, but with a couple of differences. So firstly, with an S3 bucket to put our source data in. And secondly, with an IAM role and a policy to allow Redshift to access this bucket. So before we get to that, downloaded two data sets that I mentioned. We've got title.acas.tsv here and title.basics.tsv.gz here. So you'll notice the titles data set I've unzipped and the other one I haven't. 